The format of a bank reconciliation statement is as below. The bank reconciliation statement is always as on a particular date. It's relevant only on a particular date. The balance as per cash book. We start with either the balance as per the cash book, in which case we end with the balance as per the cash book. Alternatively, we can start with the balance as per the cash book, in which case we would arrive at the balance as per the cash book. So what happens here is, the balance, we have started with a balance as per cash book of 32,000. At checks issued, not present. Let us understand what happens when the check is issued. When the check is issued, the cash book balance came down. The balance as per the cash book has come down. The balance as per the cash book remains here. We have started with the balance as per the cash book. In order to reach the balance as per the cash book, we would need to add. Therefore, we have added checks issue but not presented at. What about interest allowed by the bank? What happened when the bank allowed interest? The passbook balance went up. The cash book is here. We have started from the cash book and we are trying to reach the passbook. Therefore, we add. So, we have added interest allowed by the bank. At. Similarly, there was a direct payment into the bank by a customer. Direct payment into the bank by a customer. The moment the customer deposited money, the passbook balance is gone. The cash book balance is here. We started from the cash book in order to arrive at the passbook balance. So 15,000. Next, we have checks deposited but not cleared. What happens when we deposit the check? When we deposit the check, the cash book, we immediately record the entry. So the cash book balance is gone up. The passbook is here. In order to arrive at the passbook balance from the cash book, we deduct. So deduct, checks deposited but not cleared. We deduct. What about bank charges? What happens when there are bank charges? The passbook balance goes down. We have started from the cash book to arrive at this balance. We deduct. So deduct bank charges. And therefore, we get the balance as per the passbook as per the seven. Now, the same example has been repeated. The only thing is, we'll start as per the passbook. So, we've got a balance as per the passbook as 57,100. We've got checks deposited but not cleared. So, what happened when checks were deposited? When checks were deposited, the cash book balance went up. The passbook balance remained here. We've started with the passbook in order to arrive at the balance as per cash book we need to add. We added the checks deposited but not cleared. What about bank charges? What happened when there were bank charges? When there are bank charges, the passbook balance is down, the cash book balance is here. In order to reach the cash book balance from the passbook, we add. Therefore, add bank charge. What about checks issued and not presented? The moment the checks were issued, the cash book balance went down. The passbook is here in order to arrive at the cash book balance from passbook to deduct. 18,000 is deducted. What about interest allowed by the bank? The moment interest was allowed, passbook balance is up. In order to go to the cash book from passbook, we need to deduct. So we deducted 200. Similarly, Direct payment into the bank by a customer. The moment there is a direct payment, passbook balance is up. Cash book is here. From passbook to cash book, we deduct. And therefore, we get the balance as per cash book. The same example in the reverse form. So, this is roughly the format of a bank reconciliation statement.